You know, it wasn't me. It was one of the commentators, either Martina Navratilova or Pam Shriver. But one of the two of them said that the trouble women still have in this game is with their serves. They still really need to improve their serves. And I'm here to tell you in no uncertain terms why they're having trouble. And it has nothing to do with size or physical strength. Very simply put, women struggle with their serve because of poor technique and poor coaching. Let's start with a top player in the world, Caroline Wozniacki. I mean, she's been number one, so she should have a serve. Let's take a look right from the beginning here, why it's so different from the way the men serve. Number one, she draws back her shoulders. Look at that front leg stiffen up. Look how she draws back her shoulders, and look at the emblem on her skirt. Hasn't moved yet. So we know for a fact she's locking down her lower body, right? isolating all the movement in her upper body. Look at the hips. See that emblem? Hasn't moved yet. And look at all the movement with her upper body and in particular her arms. Look at this. Her eyes are going up. Her arms are going up. And look at the emblem on her skirt. Hasn't moved a bit. So for starters, she hasn't involved her whole body. Still, we got both arms up. And the lower body hasn't moved. So there's nothing in the lower body. Now what she's going to try and do, and I'm sure her coach told her, is bend your knees so you can press up into the serve. But look what happens when she bends her knees. She just goes straight down. It looks like she's sitting on a stool. You see that? So she has no lateral movement, just trying to get it all out of a vertical movement, straight down and straight up. Now look what happens when she comes around. Look at her knees and her shoulders and her left hand. Look how it's all facing the court. Even her eyes, they're not even up on the ball. Everything's facing the court and her arm is all alone up there at contact, trying to make something happen. So of course she has no power or control when she really needs it the most. And look here how off balance she is when she finishes because she has to over rotate to get any kind of power on her serve. So she takes her two steps just to get back. Let's compare her to some of the men's servers and see why there's such a difference. Rafa, he's got a good serve. He's not known for it, but it's a very good serve, and it's there when he needs it. High first serve percentage and good pop. Look here. First thing he does is his butt goes back. Look at his shoulders. They're still almost facing us. Look at that racket. Still facing us. And look at the emblem on his shorts. Look at his hips. See? They're already back, and look at the shoulders. They haven't even caught up with the hips yet, but the hips are fully rotated. And now the shoulders catch up. See how everything's lined up nicely there at about the 45-degree angle to the net. See that? Everything's lined up. So he's done so much more uh, laterally. It's like he's screwing down into the court compared to Wozniacki. And now look when he comes up. Look how he's facing the ball. Look at his left hand holding him in on that same angle at the 45. And look how nice and comfortable he is when he finishes. So it's clearly technique. It has nothing to do with size and strength. Let's look at Roger's serve. Once again, look at the emblem on his shorts. Look at that Nike emblem. You see how the hips really turn and screw down into the court and that left arm is up? Everything's poised to go into the hit. Now watch what happens when he starts to bring his body around. His hips come out first. Look at his left hand. He's almost side on. He's at that 45 degree angle very comfortably, easily looking up at the hit. And look at that right foot kick out, keeping his hips there at the contact point. Just like Rafa, he comes down nice and balanced after the hit. Let's take a look at Martina Hingis, former number one in the world. Same thing. Both arms are up, but look at those hips perpendicular to the net. So there's no twisting, no torque in the body, and she never really did have any power on her serve. She tries to bend, and then she over-rotates. Look here as she follows through. She's looking actually to the left. She's not even looking at the ball. Her whole body's off balance, and her arm is all alone up there. So there's just no power behind that arm. Let's take one of the best women servers, Serena Williams. Watch the emblem on her skirt. Immediately, the first thing that happens before the arms move is that emblem moves. It twists. You see that turning? That screwing down into the court. She's getting torque. She's getting tension in her body. Sort of like spring-loaded. 
and now she's at the 45, that left arm and her hips, and she explodes up into the 45, and it's much easier for her to actually see the contact point. Look at all the best servers, how they poise. See those hips? They're skewed. And look at Wozniacki. Her hips are perpendicular to the baseline. You'll find it in all the players. Once again, Hingis's hips perpendicular to the baseline. Take a look at Serena. Once again, at the 45 degree angle, that twisting makes a big difference. Look at Federer. Really got a lot of torque in his serves. That's why it appears so effortless when he makes contact finally. Now because they don't screw down into the court properly, look at the contact. Look how Wozniacki's completely pulled off to the left and look at Nadal. He's also off to the left, but he's a lefty. So he's facing the hit while the girls are looking away from the contact and their arm has no weight. So let's just take one more look. Look how she's falling away from the hit with the racket all alone as compared to Rafa, who's comfortably looking up at the hit. Let's just do one more comparison. Here's Azarenka, another top 10 women's player. That should be good enough. Watch here how she locks her leg and her arms and start to initiate the entire stroke. See this? You don't see anything going on with the lower body, but look at those arms. They're moving, moving. So the tail's really wagging the dog here. I mean, she still hasn't rotated her hips, and her arms have already done a ton. So they're moving independently, which means she's not really connecting her entire body together to get this serve. So there they are. Arms both up in the air. Look, no slope in her shoulders. And look at her legs. Very passive to this point. So she's not really getting in what I would call a coil. So once again, her hips are perpendicular. She's bending her knees and sitting on that stool again. There's no torque in the body. It's just a, 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 a simple push down and push up into the contact. And look now how her hips are parallel. See that? They're parallel to the service line which means she's already over-rotated. The hit is off to her right a little, and she's facing the net. So this, you know, the fact that she's trying to get some power on this serve causes her to over-rotate, because she never had the proper rotation to begin with. Now let's compare her to one of my students, you know, top boy in the nation, a college player. Um, look how he starts with his hips per perpendicular. Take a look at that. Now, the first thing that happens, look at those hips move. Look how the arm trails the hips. See, look at the stripe on his pants. He screws down into the court first. His hips move first, and his arms follow. So you can see the coil starting from the center of his body out to his arms. So his hips screwing down causes his shoulders to slope, and he's got tension in the body. Unlike Azarenka, where she hasn't created any coil or tension in the body. So what she'll have to do now she'll have to use her legs and an over rotation in her arms to get any power where Warren is just basically letting his body snap up into the hit of the torque that he created through his coil right from the beginning because he started with the center of his body and look at the stripes on his shorts you can see his hips are lined up with the contact and in comparison let's look at Azarenka you see she's flat up against the the service line and the baseline she's She's facing the net. So her body's coming down and her arm's all alone up there. So she's trying to get power out of a mere knee bend and an over-rotation with her shoulders. The fact is a small movement in the hips creates a larger movement in the arms and thus racket. It's like a ripple effect. It's like dropping a pebble in water. The rings get bigger and bigger and bigger as they get further out. And it's the same theory that says a small movement in the hips creates a large movement in the arms. So we at the School of Tennis believe that full body rotation on balance is the key to a good serve. How do you think your son or daughter would do if they knew this valuable information that's really not being disseminated right now in the tennis world? Instead, you have here a well-known pro talking about keeping a foot in each one of these ball hoppers to isolate the upper body to try and get racket head speed through just shoulder rotation. And it's just this kind of misinformation that's holding players back. So if you think you may prefer this more scientific method of the coil and nonlinear tennis, go to schooloftennis.net.